Hello everyone, my name is Ilya Maximiats, I'm working in Red Hat and I'm one of the OVS main trainers. This talk is about community updates and new LTS process. So let's start with some statistics, what happened since last year. In Open the Switch project, uh, we have 27 new contributors according to Git log, 500 commits, uh, it may look like two times lower than the previous year, but we should take into account OVN split with 500 commits in OVN this year, so it's roughly the same number. We had two major releases as usual and 10 stable releases. One of the main issues that brought up in community this year is slow patch reviews. So we tried to do something about it. Uh, the very first step was to clean up our patchwork instance that we are using to track patches sent to the mail list. More than 1600 patches updated with the correct state. Uh, we still have 200 patches listed. These are mostly patches that actually needs review. So reviewers are very welcome. Another thing is a patch review initiative brought up during OVS DPDK public meeting. The goal here is to engage and involve more developers in review process by providing a short list of patches to focus on. Some of the results and the actual patch lists could be found on the mailing list. Here's one of the links on, on this slide. Another big change that uh, happened recently is migration from Travis CI to GitHub Actions for our upstream continuous integration setup. The reasons for that are that Travis CI shuts down Travis CI.org service and uh, OVS, as many other open source projects, is not eligible for free compute credits. More information could be found on the mailing list. Why GitHub Actions? Uh, well, it has similar configuration. It's uh, easy to use with our existing build scripts and it doesn't require any additional configuration to set up works out of the box. One of the big downsides of this migration is that it has no support for ARM builds. ARM64 builds kept on Travis for now, but it will turn into a read-only mode by the end of this month, and we need another solution. Possible ideas here are to use Kimu multi-arch containers and build in emulation. This might be slow, or uh, look for a different upstream CI provider for ARM builds. Ideas are very welcome. One important question raised a few months ago on the mailing list is, do we actually need to support out of tree kernel model that ships in OVS repository in data path directory? Well, current states, is that out of three kernel models supports build with kernels up to 5.8 and uh, upstream kernel actually supports everything that out of three model supports and a little bit more except for stt and lisp tunnels which will probably never be in upstream kernel and i'm not really sure if anybody used them Main question, should we deprecate after three kernel model? In this case, uh, OVS will stop backporting new features from the upstream kernels and uh, will be bug fixes only. And users will still be able to build out of three kernel model for kernels up to 5.8 using our stable branches. This should save us a lot of time 
backporting fixes and supporting uh, a huge chunk of code in OVS main repository. Discussion thread is link for discussion thread is on the slide. If you are actively using out of three kernel model and uh, you want it to be there for kernels higher than 5.9, 5.8, uh, please reply to the discussion thread. We also had a major change in our process for long-term support releases. The old process had few issues. For example, a uh, new LTS release was chosen manually after discussion on the mailing list. This turned out in a situation where we had 2.5 release as an LTS for four years straight and uh, it's actually really old now. Another issue is that old LTS becomes unmaintained immediately after choosing a new LTS according to the old release process documentation. With new LTS process, new LTS release is chosen every two years, so it's uh, to 13 current LTS. To 17, the next one, to 21, and so on. And we also have a transition period, one release time frame, six months for the old LTS. Uh, this is a time for users to migrate from old LTS to a new LTS. Approximate release support timeline looks like this. You can see that actual LTS release is supported you know, approximately for three years. First half a year, it's uh, latest stable, so it's supported. Then it turns into LTS and it's supported for two years. And then there is a half a, half a year transition period. Thank you.